there. My name is Dr. Marissa May. In this video, we're going to be some, doing some subtraction in other bases. Now, friends, I'm going to tell you and be completely honest with you. A lot of times students get confused with other bases because we aren't trained to think in those bases. We love our base 10. That's what we grew up learning. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the numbers to base 10, do the subtraction, and then I'll convert them back to the bases that they're in. I know this seems like a lot of work, but I've just found that students understand it better. So let's begin in base six. So I build a chart for bases, okay? Just a place value chart. This is six to the zero, which is the ones place. The next place would be six to the first, which is the sixes place. If that's confusing to you, I want you to think about the base that you know. You know the ones place, but that really is 10 to the zero. And then you have the tens place, which is 10 to the first. And then you have the hundreds place, which really is 10 to the second. See, all number systems are built on these exponents being in the place values. If you can grab a hold of that, that will help you understand the bases. So if we look at the number five zero in base six, that is telling us we have five groups of six and zero ones. So five groups of six, if you multiply those together, will give you 30 in base 10. Look at it for 22, or sorry, two, two in base six. That means you have two groups of six, which is 12, plus two ones, which is 14. So if you subtract those, you would get 16. But 16 is in base 10. So now you've got to ask yourself, okay, well, what is this number in base six? Well, 16, how many groups of six can you get out of those? Well, I can get two groups of six because two groups of six is 12. So then how many would I have left over? That would be four. So I would have four ones to go in the ones column. So my answer here is two, four in base six. Okay, let's do it again in base two. So I like to convert them. Let me build a chart for base two here. So I've got the ones column, then the twos, which is two to the one. And then I've got the fours column, which is two to the second. Then I've got the eight column, which is two to the third. Okay, so let's look at what our number would be. So I've got one group of eight and one. So one group of eight and one is nine. Okay, let's do the other number, one, one. That means I have two, or one group of two plus one group of one, which is three. So if I subtract those, I get six. So now think about your twos chart. I need to convert six back to base two. So will, can you get a group of eight out of six? No. Can you group, get a group of four out of six? Yes, one group. So if I take a group of four out of six, I'll get two. So can I get a group of two out of two? Yes, but I don't have any left over, so I have to put a zero in the ones column. So my answer here is one, one, zero in base two. Now, remember, I said at the beginning of this that I felt like students understood better if I could get them to base 10, do the subtraction, and then go back to the base that they wanted. There are shortcuts to stay in the base. I've just found a lot of my students like to feel the comfort of base 10. And so that is why I approach these problems this way. I hope this helps.